In this quiet neighborhood of Scottsdale, Arizona, where miles of greenbelt walkways and golf courses intermingle, you would never suspect the awful crime that happened here. This case made headlines and changed the burden of proof in just about every county and state in the U.S. In 1975, Stephen Ilana Steinberg moved here from Chicago to this affluent, brand new housing development in Scottsdale known as McCormick Ranch. It was far from what McCormick Ranch used to be like. I met with a longtime resident here of Scottsdale. We moved here in 68, and so all there was was a gas station and Tasty Freeze, uh, three gas stations, a Tasty Freeze, and then there's another place over here called Meg's Hambun, okay. and that was a very popular place. I'm guessing that like McCormick Ranch, none of that was it was here. still a ranch. Oh, oh it was, okay. It was a real ranch. Huh? It was a real ranch. It's okay. the same with Ganey and uh, yeah, there were ranches. A lot of desert and all that. Yeah. In the late 70s, it was a neighborhood where most houses had backyard pools and fancy cars in their driveway. I think keeping up with this lifestyle was more than Steve and Ilana had anticipated. Little did Ilana know, this was the beginning of the end. On May 27, 1981, it was just before midnight when Steven Steinberg stabbed his wife Ilana 26 times as she slept in their bedroom. At 12.07, Scottsdale police received a call from Steven Steinberg screaming. Steve reported that two men had broken in and murdered his wife Ilana, stabbing her with a kitchen knife from the house during an attempted burglary. Police arrived. They were met with a distraught Steve. Police didn't find any evidence of an intruder. Mistakes had been made in the recent murder of actor Bob Crane, so securing this crime scene was top priority. Crime scene expert Cecil Kirk remembers how tiny Ilana was when he picked her body up to put it on the clean sheet for processing. Barely 90 pounds, he thought. After investigating into the early morning hours, Steve's story just wasn't adding up. Police ended up arresting Steve for the murder of Ilana, where he admitted he had done it, but he said he didn't have any memory of it because he had been sleepwalking. Stephen's family hired defense attorney Robert Hirsch. Forensic psychiatrist Martin Blinder was hired by Robert Hirsch. Blinder was not board certified in psychiatry, but he became well known in 1978 in San Francisco when Blinder successfully argued the Twinkie defense, where a health conscious Dan White was depressed. He loaded up on Twinkies, Coca-Cola, and junk food. The sugar triggered a violent episode where he shot and killed the mayor George Moscone and Harvey Milk. White's attorney argued that White had a diminished mental capacity during the episode. In the end, the jury convicted him of voluntary manslaughter rather than first degree murder. Dr. Donald Holmes was a psychiatrist that was also brought in by defense attorney Robert Hirsch. He's the one that introduced the sleepwalking defense. The first day of trial was February 10, 1982. Jeff Hotham was the prosecuting attorney for the state. This case made headlines right from the start when defense attorney Robert Hirsch portrayed Alana as a demanding wife, calling her a bitch who drove her husband to the brink of insanity with her excessive spending and demands of her husband. But is that what made Steve snap? Because there were other problems that they had in their marriage, like, for example, Steve's excessive gambling. Could it be that Ilana found out about all of his gambling debts that night? According to Dr. Blinder, it was all Ilana's fault. He described Steve Steinberg as a pressure cooker because his wife withheld sex from him. And this pressure caused Steve so much mental stress that it caused him to sleepwalk and stab his wife 26 times. On February 17, 1982, both the defense and prosecution rested. The case was turned over for the jury to decide. There were so many facts in this case that were never brought in. The jury would never know just how bad Steve's gambling addiction had become or that he owed in excess of $6,000 at the time of Ilana's death. They would never know of other previous shootings and kidnappings that Steve was an alleged victim of. 
They would never know about the staged theft of Ilana's car and jewelry when they were living in Chicago, or the theft of his mother-in-law's money from her cookie jar. They would never know of the $4,000 that was taken from father-in-law Barney's business. They would never know that B.B. Singers had been robbed six times in two years that Steve Steinberg had managed the restaurant for his brother-in-law Mitch, ultimately causing the business to go under. Superior Court Judge Marilyn Riddell gave the jury their instructions. She gave them three options, not guilty, not guilty by reason of insanity, or first-degree murder. It was all or nothing. She could have included other options. The prosecutor asked for second-degree murder, but Judge Riddell denied the request. The first-degree murder charge would have meant that the murder was premeditated. The judge felt that premeditation was clear enough because the suspect, Stephen, had walked some 60 feet to the kitchen to get a knife to stab his wife, but that was never explained to the jury. The jury deliberated for only three hours before reaching a verdict. On February 18, 1982, the jury came back with a verdict, not guilty by reason of insanity. During my research, this case really got to me because I have kids the same age that Alana was when she was murdered. Maybe that's why Ilana's youngest daughter, Sean, grew up to be an attorney advocate for domestic violence victims. Thirteen years later, things changed for juries in Arizona and several other states around the country. Not satisfied with the notion that someone who had clearly committed a criminal act could still be found not guilty, politicians added a new option, guilty but mentally ill, or the GBMI verdict. The person could be found both guilty and mentally ill, that way they could be incarcerated, but also appropriately treated. In a recent interview by Jenna Friedman for her series, Indefensible, Dr. Blender still stands by his testimony in the Steinberg case, blaming Ilana for making Steve snap, likening it to Steve being a victim of battered male syndrome without the physical wounds, but more mental wounds. In the end, the suspect was made out to be the victim and the victim was made to be the villain and Steven Steinberg walked out of court a free man.